topic for today is problem solving involving circular functions. And we have objectives for today's topic. The first one is to be able to analyze the problem involving circular functions. The second is to be able to identify the given in the problem involving circular functions. And lastly, to be able to solve the problem involving circular functions. Before we dive right into our topic for today, let's have a recap about circular functions. So what is circular functions? Circular functions are defined such that their domains are sets of numbers that correspond to the measures in radian units of the angles of analogous trigonometric functions, like their analogous trigonometric functions are sets of real numbers. So there are six circular functions and they are cosine, sine, secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent. Next is how do we find the circular functions? So here are the eight easy steps that can help us to find these circular functions. Of course, the first one is we must draw the picture. Second is fill in the length of the legs and the hypotenuse. Third, find the sine of the angle. Fourth, find the cosine of the angle. Fifth, find the tangent of the angle. Sixth, find the cosecant of the angle. Seventh, find the second of the angle. And eighth, find the cotangent of the angle. So, in this slide, you can see the famous Sokotawa. And this Sokotawa is used to know what is the measure of the hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite. Now, how do we relate these circular functions in real life? Some of us may know that circular functions are often used in engineering and architecture. The head of U and TV Television wanted to build a building around Quezon City. So the company asked the city mayor if they were allowed to build such a thing. After complying to the city ordinance, the construction went through. With the coordination of the engineers and the construction workers, this building came to life. The structure was composed of two parts, the upper and the lower sections. From an engineer's location is 100 feet from the base of the tower. The angle of elevation of the top of the lower section is 40 degrees. The angle of elevation of the top of the upper section of the lower is 60 degrees. The engineers want to know in what height the upper section of the tower. In case you didn't know, angle of elevation is the angle between the horizontal line from where the observer is located and the line side to an object that is above the horizontal line. So now we will solve the problem step by step. First, we need to draw or illustrate the problem. Afterwards, we need to identify what is given. So, let x be the distance from an engineer's location to the base of the tower. Theta 1 will be the angle of elevation of the top of the lower section of the tower. Uh, theta 2 will be the angle of elevation of the top of the upper section of the tower. Um, the height of the tower will, will be denoted by A. The height of the lower section of the tower will be denoted by B. And the height of the upper section will be denoted as Y. Third, from the given, we will now identify what formula we will be used. Today, we will use the formula tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So now, let's find the value of B by considering the smaller triangle. So let's now substitute the terms or the given to the um, formula. 
tangent equals opposite over adjacent equals tangent 40 equals B over 100 feet. Then, with this problem, we will now cross multiply, resulting to an answer of B equals 83.91 feet. Then, find the value of A by considering the large triangle. Um, we will use the same formula as we did earlier, um, opposite over adjacent. So, tangent equals A over 100 feet. Then, we will now cross multiply. Um, tangent 16 multiplied by 100 feet will result to uh, 173.21 feet. Then now, we will get the difference between the height of the tower um, denoted by A and the height of the lower section of the tower denoted by B to get the height of the upper section of the tower denoted by Y. So, the formula would be y equals a minus b. So, now let us substitute the given. a is 173.21 feet. Subtracted by b would be 83.91 feet, um, resulting to a difference of 83.3 feet. So, therefore, the height of the upper section of the tower would be 89.3 feet. So, did you understand the step-by-step -step solution on how to find the height of the upper tower? Just always follow the step-by-step -step on making solutions in this kind of problems. Uh, this problem shows real-life examples regarding circular functions. That's how important circular functions in our lives. Circular functions help engineers and architects in creating buildings, establishments, schools, and other things. <laughs> Circular functions are also used to model many real-life scenarios such as radio waves, tides, musical tones, and electrical currents. So, that's all for today. I hope you understand the topic about problem solving involving um, circular functions. So, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.